I'm sleepy. <laughs> She's very sleepy today. We went and saw Thor, Love and Thunder today. And I looked over and I'm seeing. <laughs> it's nice and cold and, and dark, so why not? <laughs> funny, funny, funny. Exceptionally funny movie. I won't give anything away. Yeah. So today's topic with Lynn. Yeah. Go slow. Go slow and be yourself. Right. I can't state that strong enough. There'll be a, an excitement when you get there. And again, I'm always going to come back to this. You have to be yourself and you have to learn the ropes of the Philippines. Mm -hmm. Don't let yourself get dragged in. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. So what do we mean by go slow and be yourself? There will be enough of getting used to the Philippine culture, let alone getting dragged into bar hopping and all of that type of thing. In my opinion, get your feet wet first, get yourself grounded, right? Yeah, and then allow yourself to meet people that that. Well, you'll meet enough people. It's just you don't want to get dragged into that bar scene or that constant restaurant scene where your budgets just don't support that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And even in the 10 years that Lynn and I have been going back and forth and we've met very good friends since then. Uh, some have gone on to be very quite good friends. And fortunately for us, the, the these are people who we might not have been friends with in this country, but right. out of necessity, willing to, you know, bend our own personal rules a little right. bit. Right. And you want to be with other foreigners in order for you to, you know, know the place. Well, to know the place and stuff. Most but I think yeah. the kicker is, like, we had a couple of Australians in the building that we were in and always bar hopping and always asking. But we right. kind of avoided a little bit of that in the beginning. It didn't, didn't hurt our development of a relationship at all. Yeah. Uh, and in time then you can get involved in that. Right. But what I want to caution you on is how much you can burn through money so fast. Right? Yes, the budget. Yeah. The budget. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. Dig high. Lynn can tell you how much my budget typically was when we went there. Yeah. Well, you have to set a budget for your monthly budget for yourself. You cannot just, you know, because you cannot just like blow all your money in one month or something yeah. Yeah. yeah i mean we i think we live a fairly good life there yeah we do uh we give ourselves a budget of mad money of thirty thousand pesos a month or a thousand pesos a day right yeah you know mm -hmm. and she's being calm about it now but that's mostly because she's a bit tired <laughs> yeah i'm still sleepy <laughs> But, That's right. But yeah. she doesn't really like that. and But we stick within that budget. So if groceries are needed that day, uh, then Lynn goes off the green grocer and there goes that thousand pesos. Right. It's gone. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. Uh, uh, so in our way of thinking, here's the thousand pesos. She spends 500. 500 goes to maybe the next day or, or the next day that she has to shop. Then maybe I can accumulate another thousand pesos for her. That's right. A movie or well, a beer or yeah. whatever. Well, but then that is if you are living in a rented condo with, right. you know, with full, you know, full fixtures inside the condo, then you can cook your own food. Whereas if you will just stay in a hotel, then you have to just go to the restaurant all the time to eat your, you know, yeah. meal, like to have and, your meal. So And that drives that's home. Costly. Yeah, yeah, it's costly, and it, yeah. and it really drives home this need to have a a pre trip, right? Or you've done enough travel that you've decided to go for a whole year, and then, but you've got to get into that condo as quick as you can. That's right. Even if in the preliminary it's going to cost you a little too much, maybe you have to get a fully furnished or or whatever because you want to get that one year under your belt before you make any final decisions. That's right, because we experienced that one too. Like the yeah. first year that we were there, you know, we spent a lot because we we were staying in a, in a hotel and then we have to eat out all the time because we don't have a kitchen. 
and yeah. later on we found a condo it's costly it's a, an expensive condo but then we learn a lot from our foreigner friends who are already there that you know there's you could find a cheaper condos or cheaper apartments where you could rent and then you could cook your own food yeah. and you learn where to buy your food let's say in the wet market instead of the supermarket all the time yeah but a little caveat though too is that the reason that we were living that particular life at that particular moment was because our focus was on immigration right and getting linda canada so that from my perspective ultimately she has a canadian passport and then we're free to go almost yeah not everywhere in the world but relative to a philippine passport almost anywhere yeah without any letting yourself get into that new uh your own personal kind of zen <laughs> if you want to call it yeah. And I can tell you, I had a tough time shedding my Western brain. I know. <laughs> and, uh, you know, things like we were spending $1,000 a month on rent, mm -hmm. and the elevator kept going off. Yeah. It's the How main furious thing. was I getting? I was going up the maintenance guy. Right. I was flying the F-bombs at him and everything. And upon reflection, this is one nice thing about the Filipino people. They just, they're relaxed. They just, yeah. <laughs> maybe a little too laissez-faire. They just look at you and then they can't do anything anyway. So, yeah, yeah even if you're furious, yeah, you're just, you're just furious, but then they cannot help you. Yeah. And then, yeah. And then fast forward a couple of years, we meet a, a good friend who's since gone home. He ultimately couldn't adjust. And we he was having a difficulty with the fact that he was getting these constant text messages on his phone mm -hmm. and he thought he was paying for it but he he knew he wasn't paying for it but so we took him down we get him in front of the cell phone company and of course they've got all of their their little cubicles and uh you know i sit back and let him talk his way through and he did finally was he stood up put his hands on there and went oh for god's sakes we were here for a decade or more and we taught you guys English. And I just about grabbed his throat and went, you didn't teach them any English. You came here for R and R. <laughs> I was mad. But then later I had yeah. to remind myself I was there too. Yeah. And so it's not easy, guys. I, one of the reasons I'm doing these videos is I'm trying to give a sense of reality about going there. And I hear too many vloggers out there going, you know, with some fluff and puff and trying to get you, you know, yeah, do this and that will help you with this and this and this. But honestly, it is a different country. Right. If you think that your embassy is going to re re uh, rescue you. I don't know. It won't happen. I don't a know. friend of ours, I've mentioned this before in the health part of it. Right. With the hospitals. He ended up in the hospital. Do you think his embassy rescued him? No way. If you're alone. He had to get back to his country I, to get proper yeah. care and where he was going to be covered. And he couldn't get back. The right. embassy said, no way. You go pay your debts and then we'll help you get back to your right. to, to I think home. if there is a calamity in a particular area in a country where you are in or any, like, let's say, for example, what happens to COVID? Some countries are repatriating their, you know, citizens yeah. back into the home country so that they could go home. But you know, if you are you you alone gets into trouble, I don't, I doubt it. Yeah. I doubt it. Yeah. Like if especially if you that go there. That was a there, really rare one off. If you and, go, yeah, if you go there yeah. as a tourist, then it you go there on your own will. You are yeah. not there for, because the, your country is sending you to do something. No, your the embassies that are there. Yeah. They're economic. They're working with right. the government to try and work deals economically. That's right. We are insignificant. I hate to say it, but we are insignificant. What you see in the movies, I call yeah. bullshit. <laughs> yeah. But Filipinos are friendly. They'll, yeah. you know, they'll get along with you. But don't just, you know, like just be prepared to be hassled or be especially yeah. taxes. I think that's airport. another another point is don't strut your stuff yeah. blend in as fast as you can i had a foreigner walk up to me once i was wearing a because of my engineering and stuff i arrived to see lynn 
in, in one of my work Polo shirts. Shirt and, yeah. and, and this guy walked up and says, dude, you look like you're here for work. People get kidnapped all over the world and corporations do pay. They don't want that publicity. Your government won't pay. Yeah. But the corporation might. So now he's dressed down. He's yeah, dressed, dressed down. down. My tan yeah. line, I'm, I'm darker than limits. <laughs> Wearing sleepers, sleeveless shirt and shorts. So yeah. that's yeah. just it. Like, yeah. Yeah. So I think the, the, the big message of what we're saying in this particular video is one, be yourself. Take right. some time to learn the culture. Just sit back and watch the world go by and, and learn right. that. Yeah. You've got enough with learning wet markets and introducing yourself to expats and finding out where to find a condo. And that can be a fun in itself. That's right. And yeah. so getting dragged into the bar scene or whatever. Now, I do want to point out one thing. I have post uh, done videos, and I'll put the two cards here, the one on Angolese and the one on Cebu. And the one thing I will say about the Cebu area, now I cannot speak to Bohol and I cannot speak to Dumaguete. But, or other places. In yeah, the but I can yeah. speak to Angolese. Their English is not as good as what it is in the Cebu area or the, maybe the whole Visaya area. Well, in Cebu, in the city alone, you could expect that people will speak to you in and English. And helpful, guys. Yeah. Wherever How many times have we walked up to a guard because you don't know the area? Yes. And the guard turns around and says, oh, it's just this way, this way. So all they want to have you do is go away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, you know, some people are helpful. Yeah. You know, you just ask them, do you know somebody who could speak English that they can talk to and ask yeah. this question? They would gladly, you know, help yeah. you But with I think that. that's the difference between the guards, let's say, in yeah. Cebu and the ones in Angolese. Uh, yeah. you got to remember that Angolese is importing people from all over the Philippines that are ready for the hustle, okay? Right. And, because, and I think that's yeah. why you find so many expats probably started 20 years ago that flocked into Dumaguete and it became a hotbed. Yeah, Dumaguete yeah. also, like, you know, the edu education there is also good. Like, people could speak English as well nice one of the nicest and cleanest city that you know yeah when they I was have there. a wonderful boardwalk there right. you got to remember it's Rizal a very Boulevard. small city it is and it has a good university right Silliman university yeah. is one of the and, best and, and yeah but and, again on the hospitalization especially i think some of this uh defined clinical stuff that you might need yeah. later in life be prepared that if if dumaguete uh, or negros is the island you want to be on Right. Uh, know your roots back to Cebu because that's where your hospital or yeah. your clinical stuff. Right. Either you could take a plane or it's just like, I don't know if there's no, a plane there's... from, from the Maguete to Cebu no, because they're... there is an, an they're airport. They're all taking ferries. Lynn. But yeah. the best thing you could take is the ferry. There's a yeah. fast craft that goes from Cebu to the Maguete. I'm not sure if it's every day. It? Now, there is, because I was oh, working in the oh, Maguete okay. before, and it's like you know, I don't two think companies it's, are I don't think that. it's running right now, or maybe it's just going back again, but some of the videos... After COVID, Just after COVID, everybody was having to go just that little hop across and then grab a bus. Yeah, and so, it's like oh, three... Yeah. Got you in the eye, didn't I? <laughs> and it's just three and a half hours for a fast craft to go. Yeah, if you're yeah. going all the way. It is one of the main reasons that I really, really strongly feel that you need to get to Cebu. Uh, right. You have Bohol there, for sure. That's a fast craft. Cebu is a in. hub, so and, yeah. and it's a major hub. Without having to get entangled in that whole monster city that Manila is, yeah. I want to point out the 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 infrastructure in Cebu and the Philippines as a whole. It's great. You do not need to own a bike. You do not need to own a car. We were, we've been there for 10 years, and again, if you shed a little of that anxious yeah. Western high-paced life, if you shed a bit of that, you go down, you know where the V-hires are, you get on yeah. there. Again, you might, need to, you might want to book two seats. We've done that many times. That's right. So if you and don't want to be, you know, sitting crowded. beside a local or something, buy two seats. It's cheap. Yeah. yeah. Or if you're by yourself, try and get the front seat. Wait, right. for, wait for the next V-hire. They're always yeah. leaving. The, the drivers of those VHRs or the buses, they would gladly take you, put you in a front seat or something yeah. because foreigners there are VIPs. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, we've had that happen when they we've gotten on a bus. Yeah. We ended up doing a 
44 hour on the bus from, from Leyte City to Manila. Yeah, from Leyte to Manila. Now, yeah. 44 hours was because a storm happened. We couldn't get across yeah, on the ferry. We stayed overnight. But the point was, island. the bus driver told the people in the front, go to the back. You're going to yeah. sleep the whole way anyway. This is a foreigner. He wants to see everything. <laughs> <laughs> the main goal shed some of that Western, right? get into that little Zen moment and be an observer for a while. That's right. As you're, you know, sitting in McDonald's, yeah. introducing yourself to Westerners. And just be friendly. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if you ran into us and you said to us, could your wife or, or do you know of somebody that could help me yeah. understand the wet market? Hell, we would go with you. Yeah. <laughs> and or, there are or, a lot or of any people. Any foreigners who has Filipino wives, they would love to help you. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah because we experienced that those, you know, Filipinas, you know, Filipino wives of the foreigners we met, they are the one who taught us where to go and what to take, what yeah. tricycle or jeep to take. So we did that. Like, we're living like a local. And in that particular area, like, people are okay with you, you know. You can just yeah. go along with them, like, you know, live with them. They were fine. This coming Wednesday's topic, Lynn and I are going to talk about what a Filipino sees, woman or man, whatever, when this, the Westerner, walks in. Find your Zen moment. Just yeah. be part of the crowd for a while and do slow steps, but with that focus of getting that condo as quick as you can. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay, guys, that's Alrighty. a wrap.